Here's what's coming up tonight. I think we'll be doing a lot of a great favor to our future generations by feeding them healthy options. Sashi conducts a focus group to see what an average household shopping list looks like. So let's maybe look at what do we eat for breakfast? What does our breakfast normally look like? She shows us how to substitute some of these items. Today we'll show you that you could make pancakes out of cassava flour. And how to make delicious healthy cassava and coconut pancakes. The Foundation for Rural Integrated Enterprises and Development, or Friend Fiji as it is commonly known, is a homegrown community development non-governmental organization based in Lotoka on the west coast of Fiji's main island, Viti Levu. The hallmark of Friends work is the integrated approach it brings into community development, working with communities in rural and underserved regions of Fiji's western, northern and central divisions. This encompasses formal and non-formal settlements and they ensure inclusion of the marginalized members of the community including those living with disabilities, widows, single parents, orphans and former prisoners. Through its integrated social, health and economic interventions, FRIEND empowers communities through knowledge, skills and resources to improve their lives and break out of poverty. With the support of donor partners and through its own funding, Friend engages communities in governance programs, sustainable livelihoods, disaster preparedness and healthy living targeting women, youth and men in each community they work in for sustainable development. The times are difficult but we all still have to eat and we still have to make our shopping list. So each week how much money do we need um, to be able to buy food uh, for our families? Anguished about the depressing state of poverty in rural communities in Fiji and what she strongly felt was resource wastage, journalist turned community development worker Sashi Kiran registered Friend as a charitable organization in December of 2001. It was set up in response to the 2000 civil unrest in terms of trying to bring livelihoods to people when people were in dire need. So we are more known for our livelihood activities though uh, our whole um, focus is socio-economic and health empowerment for healthier and better communities. So that means we do a whole range of income generation, we are working with people to empower them, we do a lot of disaster response, uh, as well as uh, trying to ensure that people are, are healthier, and our focus on that is NCDs, the non-communicable diseases. In 2002, Friends started a safe scheme in 10 communities in Ba. Around the same time, a partnership was developed with the Senior Citizen Center in Ma for the startup of an income generation project, Tamarine Chutney. The chutney was officially launched on International Women's Day the following year, along with Chili Chutney, created to help fund Friends projects. The products are both still available and sold under the Friend Fiji style brand today, forming part of Friends Sustainable Livelihoods program. Fast forward to last year when we had filmed this episode with Friend, Fiji had been experiencing the first wave of the COVID pandemic. Well, Lotoka was the first city to go into lockdown and we were in the city. Uh, we were actually in the lockdown area. So within days we realized that a lot of people who were on casual employment, you know, people who uh, live day to day did not have food. So within a week we were actually going into communities and providing food rations, um, community members who did not have NCD medications because they could not go to a hospital, it was a COVID active hospital, we were with, working with doctors, we were providing the NCD medications. And since then, we've, uh, with the massive unemployment in Nandi, we have now a COVID um, response centre in Nandi. Um, so between Lotoka and Nandi, we run two food banks where people, if they don't have food, we are providing them food rations seedlings to make sure um, these are long-term seedlings, perennial crops which can ensure food security in the long run and we're also providing livelihood training or uh, you know, um, creating opportunities for people to reskill themselves as they have lost their jobs to be able to look, look at other livelihood options because we don't know how long this crisis may be. Um, so those that we have been like the key focus 
We are also working with the NCD patients who are unable to afford medication to be able to support them with NCD management at the moment. We have had this over-dependence on uh, processed foods and we are finding even if uh, we're talking to people in the rural areas and who have abundance of food, there's generally a sense of lack of food if they're not able to provide the families with uh, processed foods or the supermarket foods. You know, the usual rice, flour, sugar. Um, and uh, we feel, we see that both urban, peri-urban and rural areas when we're working with them, there's a general, oh my God, we don't have food to feed our family. Even though the country is, you know, a very abundant country and we are able to grow food quite readily. And that has to shift. Also, I think the crisis hasn't really hit us that it's not going to be over anytime soon and we need to be thinking about food security. What, does, how, what are we going to feed our children six months down the line? Uh, four months down the line? Eight months down the line? And what does it mean? You know, uh, our forefathers had much less money than we probably earned now and much, more op much less options in supermarkets. They still fed us and you know, we grew up to be you know, pretty decent, uh, you know, healthy human beings. Uh, whereas uh, currently, even before COVID, our children, we had 80% of malnutrition or anemia cases in the kids below the age of two. And 50% of kids below the age of five are anemic. We have huge NCD crisis. And that is also to, to do with processed foods. Um, and when in 80s, when the step, first step survey was done, it said the indigenous regions did not have diabetes. So I think our forefathers always had the solution. And maybe this is the time to pause and look back and look at what food we grew, what food we ate, what is in abundance, how can we still feed our children and not think that we don't have food. For example, lumi, a plate of lumi is $2 or $3 in the market. You can make a couple of lumi cakes out of it, you know, feed you know, a decent number of children out of it. So food is available and food is around us. Um, we, we're turning much more to canned foods and tin fish. You know, a small tin fish is costing us almost $4. Whereas a string of fish, if you smoked it, or if you, um, you know, um, boil it and shrink it and, and dry it and keep it in little packets, those are the things that we can feed our family, which is healthier. It's not processed. It's not full of a lot of salt and, and oil and things. And there is a lot of seafood available. There is, uh, you know, kaikoso, uh, sidi, uh, kuita, octopus and things that we don't see in the mainstream market. But it's there. And so when we say that we can't feed our children, I think we need to look at much more of our surroundings and look at how did we feed our children before? Um, cassava yada, you know, cassava porridge, pumpkin porridge, uh, things that were you know, readily available. Uh, we were making a whole range of that without the use of oil or sugar or all these things that are pretty harmful. But we are having to dig up money for these sorts of things. We have communities living the, by the sea and uh, you know, being able to make sea salt instead of buying sea salt. But that could also become a commodity if you're able to make it. You, there's a market for sea salt. There is a market for lumi. So if you're collecting and able to sun dry it and it's easy to carry, you know, it's something that can be sold. We are buying gems. When we are an abundance of fruit country, we can make our own gems. We can make our own peanut butter. Uh, you know, instead of looking at pancakes for white flour, they, we can be making pancakes from cassava flour. We can be making rotis from our leftover uh, boiled cassava and breadfruit and things. We can be growing dal um, in our surrounds. So there's a lot of options. We run a restaurant, Tukuni, and we feed a lot of people um, um, curries. Uh, you've seen our chutneys on shelf. We use coconut oil. We do not purchase any outside commercial oil. We make our own uh, pressed oil and we're using that for all our curries and all our chutneys except for the pickles where we use mustard oil. Um, so it's a clean oil. We know the source of it. We know where it's coming from. It's available. It's cheap. It's a, you know, around the coconuts are around us. Uh, we don't, uh, we see a lot of people very dependent on potatoes. You can easily grow potatoes by the way. But we could also replace cassava or breadfruit. Uh, in, so in, in chickpea curry, we just throw some cassava and it's delicious. Uh, you know, so these are, uh, you know, we very, uh, people are very dependent on, say, imported carrots. They're imported, we don't know the life of it since the farm to our table. We just use um, um, half-ripe purple, you know, gives the color, more nutritious. 
you know, taste is not, it's not any very strong taste or anything like that. So there are lots of things which we used to do. Um, you know, look at the row row. Um, there's so much available around us and you could make delicious food out of it. Uh, the amount of frying we do for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, if you just did charcoal cooking, both the ethnic groups used to do charcoal cooking, you know, charcoal bacon, charcoal fish, you know, charcoal quid. There's so many things we used to be able to charcoal, but today we depend on this heavy oil frying for breakfast. And we have any, I mean, very high levels of heart disease in this country. So I think this is an opportunity for us to step back, pause, look what's around us, what's healthy, what's delicious, what our forefathers knew, and really think about feeding our children healthier options and being food secure going forward. We do not know where this pandemic is taking us. And we need to start preparing now. Well, we're running late in preparing, but we still you know, need to start thinking about preparing. Coming up, Sashi heads a focus group to find out what the average grocery shopping list for their families look like. When we're looking at these $150, what are we purchasing? What's, what does our grocery look like? From humble beginnings, Friend has over 60 dedicated staff who now work in offices in Lotoka and Lambasa on community governance, sustainable livelihoods and smile health. The Friend Fiji style range of quality products now include pickles, chutneys, jams, herbal teas and spices made from local resources as well as handmade card and craft products. Proceeds from the sale of these products help fund Friend's projects. Part of their post-COVID work has seen 15,000 food packs distributed, infant formula given and livelihood funds for single mothers, a focus on NCD awareness and medication, charcoal and soap making training programs, skills and life skills workshops, backyard gardening tips as well as organic gardening workshops and helping communities rethink current skills and resources for sustainability during this pandemic. Most people are thinking, oh my God, I need money. And yes, we do need money. Uh, but large numbers of people, when we say, okay, what do you um, spend on? Uh, it's a very interesting list. And a lot of that list um, could be probably replaced. You know, we'll show you how to do pancakes using cassava flour and things. Roti, if you don't have white flour, you could simply be making roti out of root crop flour. Gems, honey, um, you know, peanut butter we can make it at home. Um, tea. Um, so rosella, uh, you know, you could make gems out of it, but if you sun dry it and keep it and you can um, dilute it and keep it in the fridge and that's your base for your cordial if you can't afford fruits. Um, so we, let's look at what other things we can chuck off that list that's available around us that we can feed our families, but we could probably also barter and we could also sell and evolve a new culture of a new sort of co commodities out there, which will uh, help earn an income for the farmers who are growing this, but it'll also really, you know, I think we'll be doing a lot of a great favor to our future generations by feeding them healthy options. Based off of this, Sashi conducted a focus group workshop for us to learn where and how we could substitute store-bought items for homegrown. What do we buy when we go to supermarkets? Rice. So we're looking at rice. What else? Sugar. Sugar. Flour. Flour. Oil. Oil. Dal. 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 Milk. Milk, did you say? Mm. Sorry, you said something? Tuna. Tuna. And what else? Onion. So, uh, so you'll say tuna and you said tin fish. Anything else tin you buy? Onion, garlic, Peel tomatoes. Peel tomatoes. Mm. Peel tomatoes. Tin tomatoes. You said something else, sorry? Uh, garlic, ginger, onion. So garlic, ginger, onion. What else? You're buying spices, salt, salt. Jam, butter. jam, butter, sugar, tea, tea, coffee, Milo. What 
Okay. Potatoes. Noodles. Noodles. This is every week. This is this is what our week, our list looks like every week, yes. pretty much. Okay. Have you tried growing vegetables? You have, but the drought is impacting it. So, what sort of vegetables were you planting? The cabbage. Cabbage, and then you have to regrow it. Are they, are you growing any um, sajan or any of the longer term crops? No. Now, if you did not have any money on you. Uh, so let's maybe look at what do we eat for breakfast? What does our breakfast normally look like? Roti, vegetable curry. Mm. Roti, curry. Mm. Biscuit. Is there anything? What else do you make for breakfast? Loloban. Loloban. Pancake, parle, lula. Mm. So here you you need a lot of flour, right? So we are using flour and we are using oil, right? What else are we using? Sugar. So today if you have no money or if you are growing your own food but you still need this, right? So if you don't have money, is there anything else we can do to replace these foods? Is there any replacements you guys can think of? No. Oh my god. <laughs> Up next, Sashi and Mohine show us easy and available substitutes for the list of items mentioned by the focus group. But there's a lot of good replacements and today we'll show you that you could make pancakes out of cassava flour. You can make rotis using cassava. So you'll see uh, many a times families feel that unless they have this, um, you know, they cannot feed their families. But there's a lot of good replacements. And today we'll show you that you could make pancakes out of cassava flour. You can make rotis using cassava. And uh, that could be your breakfast. And we don't necessarily need so much flour and so much oil and so much frying. We'll also show you um, jam. Everybody knows how to make their own jam. We don't have to buy jams. Uh, honey, whoever is able to grow it, you can grow it, make your own peanut butter. So you know from peanuts from town you could basically make small plots of garden and be making your own peanut butter. We'll also show you um, the different flowers we have. You know the coconut that we throw away after taking out the lolo to our pigs, that is coconut flour. You could either use it, you know, um, without powdering it or you could, um, you know, just mixing it with your rotis and your pancakes or you can powder it as a coconut flour and we'll show you that as well. Um, various types of teas, herbal teas, cordials. Um, so let's have a look. Let's make um, some pancakes and some rotis first. Uh, that could be a quick replacement for some of the things that we need to buy from supermarket. So the process of uh, making cassava flour is very, very uh, simple. Um, we'll, uh, we'll go through the process later on, but this is cassava flour that has been uh, made at home. So a cup of that in a bowl. We'll add in a bit of uh, coconut flour as well. That's uh, been uh, so. This is the dried coconut, and this is what it looks like when it's blended together. So this is your throwaway after you take out the lolo and you throw this away to your pigs. This can actually be used for it's tasty and it's great fiber. It uh, gives it a nice coconutty flavor as well. So we mix that in together. And we'll be putting in one egg. And instead of using normal milk, uh, we'll put in some coconut milk. That's it? Yep. So that's your better for your cassava pancake. Now to make cassava flour, it's simply you can grate this. You can grate the yoka. Um, and you can either grate it like this and sun dry it like that. Can you pass me the dried one? Yeah. So once you've simply grated your tapioca, put it in the sun. There's nothing more to it. Just putting it in the sun. And this is your dried cassava. Now you can make this into porridge easily by just boiling it and thickening it. Um, or you can powder it. Can you pass me the powder? And that's what Moinesh has been using. So you can simply put in your blender and you blend it. So that's your cassava flour. There's nothing more to it. 
and that's what he's using to make pancakes. And all of us have cassava, we can grate, we can make yada. This is also beautiful to make into, um, you know, um, steamed, uh, you can simply steam this with a mix of coconut um, lolo and a bit of coconut flour, and that makes perfect breakfast. No need for sugar, no need for anything else. Simple, straightforward. Now some people do like to um, grate it and then squeeze it and then that's a starch and that's something you can dry and use it to thicken your soups instead of buying corn flour. So we have everything at home and now Munish will show you how he makes his pancakes. Thank you. So we'll move over to the stove and uh, we'll show you how the pancakes are made. And while he's doing that, this any boiled kakanandina left over can be blended and be made into rotis and we'll show you that as well when we go to the stove. So we grease the griddle with a bit of uh, coconut oil. This is VCO. So when the griddle heats up, um, we'll uh, take a little yeah. full of uh, the batter and we'll just pour it over the griddle gently and we'll just spread it out. Fold it over. And that's our some pancake. Wow. That's simple. Yeah, very simple. Instead of butter for better, this is better for better Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, time has caught up to us tonight, but as promised, we will show you how to make your own peanut butter and also roti using boiled cassava and bundi. You won't want to miss next week's episode. To learn more about the FO4ACP program, log on to www.pacificfarmers.com.